It is just a huge honor today to be sitting in my house talking to Awatuki's most amazing orthodontist, Chris Wolber. Thank mm -hmm. you so much Thanks for coming for over. Up. And uh, my gosh, uh, and, and you made it here the night after the Oktoberfest in Tempe. So yep. that was it. Was it hard to wake up this morning? No, it was, it was a lot of fun down there. It was a lot time. of fun? Yeah. I bet it was. Perfect. I love that. Night. Especially this weather. So Dr. Wolver was born in Nova Scotia, Canada. Now that Nova Scotia, that's above Maine? Way east coast, yep. Above but is Maine. it north Maine or is it even east of Maine? Northeast. Yeah. Northeast. What's directly above Maine? New Brunswick? New Brunswick. And then you're over one. Yep. So, man, you came from the upper far right all the way to the far left. He was born in Nova Scotia, Canada, and then later moved to Calgary, Alberta, which is just straight 1,200 miles straight north of Phoenix. Absolutely straight. Yep. Yeah. He attended the University of Alberta for undergraduate biochemistry, a major in genetics, a minor, and received his DDS from the University of Alberta in 1996. He married his wife, Allison, right after graduating, and then they moved to Oregon, where he worked as a general dentist for one and a half years before going back to Canada to get his master's degree in orthodontics at the University of Manitoba. After a three-year residency in orthodontics, they moved here to Ahwatukee in 2001. Dr. Wolver worked at Southwest Dental Group in Tempe to get sponsored sponsored for his green card. He and Allison had their daughter Maya in 2003 and their son Ben in 2005. He opened Wolver Orthodontics in Ahwatukee in 2008 and he became a U.S. citizen in 2014. Well, congratulations for getting U.S. Yep. citizenship. That was a very cool day. And uh, so my gosh, not, not to be weird or rude or whatever, but you, you came here in 2001 four months before 9-11, then you open your orthodontic practice right before the biggest financial meltdown. Perfect business plan. Yeah. Oh my gosh, so so, <laughs> talk, so what was it like to move from Canada to the US three months, four months before 9-11 and you weren't a US citizen? Did that throw a monkey wrench in your plan? Um, yes, and, and Justin, uh, you know, we knew other friends who had previously moved down as professionals and uh, they got their green cards and their permanent resident status in two to three years. Um, and after 9-11, everything just slowed down. So uh, it took, took six and a half years to get a green card. And the only way that affected me was you can't open your own office or run your own business until you have permanent resident status, until you have your green card. So I, uh, I was just planning on a couple years at at, at a group practice and then hoping to open my own practice sooner and that put it on hold for four or five years. But I was working and uh, I had my kids during that time. So instead of the stress of opening up business, I, it, was, it was good to just have a job and then get the kids, raise, start raising the kids. And so it made that, made that easy actually. Then. And what was it like to open up a business in 2008 when basically the, yeah. the, the sky collapsed, what, what was it, in, Lee, in a, and, brother? And orthodontics is uh, not what people rush out and put their money on when uh, they can't pay their rent. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, it was very stressful, um, but the decision had been made. I, uh, I had, I had uh, already I bought the building, the office condo, and so yeah, that, that crashed with it, but um, you know, the, the only thing about opening in October 08 was that I never watched my business go down. Because you started in the basement. Because I, I started at the bottom. And so uh, you turn the lights on, and uh, I, had, uh, I had my manager, Kim, and one assistant, Patricia, with me. And the three of us, uh, three of us turned on the lights and opened the door and sat around, waited for some patience for a little while. So it, it, it was stressful, it was hard. Um, but um, there, uh, you know, when you, when you invest in a business, it's, it's a big investment and there's, there's, no, there's no going back on it. So you, you, what do you do? You make it work. So uh, we went out, we hit the pavement, we started talking to all the dentists and just letting them know we were there. And um, you know, I, I was working just over in Tempe and I'd been there for seven years. And so I had lots, I had a, I had a, a, a following in Awatuki. I probably already treated a thousand people from Awatuki already. So my, my name was known already. Um, so that helped. Um, an unfortunate circumstance ended up, ended up um, working for me in the long run, right? Um, right as I opened, as you said, it was, it was October 08. It was, it was hard times. 
and one of our um, one of our community's long-standing orthodontists, Kirk Spiker. I opened in October, and um, and Dr. Spiker, he unfortunately he had to close his doors in December of '08. The, because of the meltdown. Yep, the recession. The recession hit him. He had two offices: one in Awatuki, one in Chandler. He had been going for 25 years, um, and it, it just it hit him it hit him hard. And uh, and so I, you know I had just I just moved into the community. It was only been a couple months, you know. But I of, of, <laughs> of course I reached out. You know I made the call and I, I said, Kirk, I'm, I'm I'm sorry to hear. It's uh, if there's anything I can do to help you, let me know. And uh, a couple of days later, he called me back and he said, he said, he said, yeah, you know what? I, I really do need help because what he had done is he had just he locked his door and he put a sign on his door and he said, I'm I'm sorry, I'm out of business. But he had about 240 active patients in braces still, and so he he was he was uh, in a bit of hot water with the with the board, the dental board, for closing his doors on some active patients. He didn't you know kind of give them an avenue to continue treatment. And um, and a lot of these people, they were going around to the other orthodontists, and and you know the other orthodontists were saying, you know, well it'll it'll there'll be a fee to finish your treatment, even though they had already paid, and you know it was just a, a bad circumstance for everyone. So I uh, you know I made the decision that the right thing to do was um, was to help help Dr. Spiker, that, and you know so I took those patients in. There was there was no there was no income from it. They, you know they had paid and the finances just didn't work with Dr. Spiker and it, and it had all been gone. So, as a new business owner, I was like, well, I'd like to do this. I'd like to help these people, but at the same time, that's gonna be tough on me because I'm gonna have to hire another staff. I'm gonna have to buy more materials. But I made the decision to do it, and so, uh, you know, the, the good thing was it, it brought energy into a, into an empty building. And of course, uh, the word got out that, that I was helping these people for free, and they've got friends, and they've got brothers and sisters, and so it 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 it, it helped me, I guess. It, it, in the end, kind of kicked. When I heard that the first time, I cried. <laughs> I did. No, about that. <laughs> I no no, I did. I I mean, I loved was, Kirk. I knew yeah. I've known him. He was a pediatric dentist before an orthodontist, and he's he's still practicing as a pediatric dentist now uh, at the Children's Hospital. Yeah, yeah. and I I thought you yeah. were a saint. No, he uh, it was I mean, a, it was really a, it was I, a I real really terrible did. situation. So no, it's um, and it's tough because in finances, you know, if you had an MBA or an economics degree, yeah, this business would be closed. But you have a professional license with the Arizona Board State Board of Dental Examiners, and and so yeah, it was a it was um, yeah, and orthodontics is a it's a long relationship you know if you've in a lot of the general dental stuff if you've done your filling and you've done your root canal you know you're not kind of leaving a patient mid-treatment orthodontics there's it, it's it's a one and a half two year process and so there's those people were all kind of stuck themselves and so well let, let's talk about that you you just said it, it's a one and a half or two year process you know can be when when i got out of school 30 years ago everybody used to say that what what is boeing and orthodontist have in, have in common Every time Boeing came out with a 727 or a 737, 747, 757, 7, it didn't matter. They always fly the same miles per hour. Sure. They never went faster. And ortho, no matter what new technology or whatever, it still took two years. But now, just recently, there's been a couple of new technologies that are claiming that you don't have to wait two years to do your ortho, that you can actually do it faster sure. now. It is. It's, um... is, that, is that more... From the marketing department of these companies, or are you seeing that in real life? No, it's real life, um, for sure. I'd say, um, you know, my career's getting close to 20 years now. I'd say the, the biggest advancements in the first kind of 10 to 15 years of my career were making orthodontics more comfortable and less invasive, and mostly with the advent of Invisalign and things like that. Um, you know, smaller brackets, clearer brackets, just making making orthodontics a little better than it was back in the 80s. The, the last five years and maybe the next 10 years moving forward, the big changes in orthodontics will be velocity. How do you, how do you not take two years to do stuff? So um, the two main avenues are, um, one of them is it's uh, it's called micro osteoperforations. <laughs> Big long word. Basically, orthodontic tooth movement relies on 
inflammation. When we put pressure on a tooth and we move a tooth, we stress the periodontal ligament, the body reads that as trauma, micro trauma, and it sends in the body's inflammatory response to heal the trauma. And the healing process allows teeth to move. And so the first way to accelerate teeth is we cause little micro traumas. And it doesn't sound too fun, but it's actually really not a big deal. We use a little topical anesthetic in the gums, and we use a little surgical device uh, made by... Is that called Excelident? That one's called Propel, made by Propel. a company called Propel. Um, and we, we go through it, and we perforate the gums, and we go into the bone in between the teeth. And again... Is that at every appointment? No. It's, so what that does is it basically it, it, it causes uh, accentuated microtrauma to the bone, body brings in more inflammatory cells, more healing, and it, it has been clinically and lab proven to accelerate tooth movement. Um, and, you know, I've, I, I certainly don't use it on all my patients. I've used it selectively on stubborn things. I've got, you know, some adult teeth are harder to move than the kids, and if I've got an adult and they've got a space and it is just not closing, little topical anesthetic, one-time propel, and we, you know, something that we've been fighting for four or five months can be gone in a month, so, you know, so, so that's working pretty well. So, no, you don't, you know, if, if, it's, um, if it's like an adult extraction case, then in those extraction sites, when the tooth is first extracted, there's a lot of vascularity and cellularity, and that helps us move teeth real quick. And after about four months, that inflammation, like in something like that, if, if maybe you did it two times over the course of treatment, that would help you finish that. So that's the first way they're moving teeth faster. And the other one is you mentioned Excelident. So Excelident and the other and the same company, Propel, they both have a vibratory device, little horseshoe wafer with a little um, rechargeable battery that it vibrates and you you bite on the wafer and you hold it there for about five minutes and what that's doing the vibratory action again vibrating the periodontal ligament um one people are saying it it makes their teeth a lot more comfortable during orthodontics they actually they it it it, it takes away some of the discomfort of orthodontics but it also can accelerate orthodontics as well too um so I think that's where that's where the, the future is going to be is yeah how do we not take two years to do this um, so so from 20 years ago to today what, what was your average case time <laughs> length 20 years ago what is it today uh, 20 years ago it, it was two years 24 months yeah um, what, what would you say how many months think it is now less than a year and a half probably so it it's gone from 24 to 18. That, that's 25 percent. Yeah, 25. Like, yeah. I had algebra. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yep. So it's gone from 24 18 yeah. to eight, less than 18 months. Yeah. Um, um, some people say that that vibrator, um, a lot of it is just because it's just getting the Invisalign tray seated properly. That when you put it in some of your thumb, it's probably not fully seated. Do you think a you think it's really vibrating the periodontal ligament? Do you think that's a big part of it? Yeah. Or do you think it's just really seeding the tray? Uh, both, but like both, but it, it is it does again both both these companies to get FDA clearance. You you've got to run your tests, and it's so it's been it's been clinically proven that it is being transmitted to the periodontal ligament, which is increasing the vascularity and the cellular response and increasing tooth movement. So. Let, let's talk, you know, and um, when I got out of school 30 years ago, all the big brands were already existing. Crest, Colgate, Listerine. Yeah. I'd say the only massive brand around the globe built in the last 30 years was Invisalign. Yeah, Invisalign. Do you know anybody who's never heard of it? Uh, no, not now. You, you can, we, we, when we go on vacation, I mean, you, you can go to a restaurant in, in um, um, gosh, where were we? Cambodia. And, uh, and Malaysia, and when the waitress found out we were dentists, said, uh, she started asking me questions about Invisalign. I was like, oh my God, I mean, it's just everywhere you go. I think, I think Invisalign, I think 
in my lifetime, I think braces will be gone. It'll just be Invisalign. It'll just be clear aligners. That's my guess. And, and, and so what, why is that? It's like your phone sitting there. You know, there's, you know, you look at a cell phone from 20 years ago, and you look at a cell phone now, they're incomparable. Invisalign was started in 1997. Um, and where it is now, 20 years later, it's, it's, it, it, you might, to, to a layman, you look at it, you think it looks the same because it's a piece of plastic. It's infinitely improved. It's the, the technology in, it's a software driven device, but the, the technology in the software, the technology in the plastic, the plastic has changed. Um, it sounds counterintuitive, but the plastic is softer now than it used to be. But that softer plastic has a bigger range of deflection, which just slowly, or not, not slowly, but just, just more effectively just keeps putting the pressure on the teeth and moving the teeth better. The little bumps that we have to put on the teeth, the attachments, that's, that used to be, I used to be part of the group with Invisalign, the clinical advisory board, and it was just the doctors doing a lot of it, just thinking, well, I wonder if this attachment would work. Let's try this. I wonder if this would work. Let's try this. The one thing that Invisalign has over all the braces companies is data. They have already, they've done, they've recently done their four millionth customer. And what they have for all four million people is a digital model of where they started and a digital model of where they finished. And for a lot of them, progress models all along the way. And so they, they can see which teeth respond, which teeth don't. Um, one of the biggest things they did was they hired uh, uh, an engineer from NASA. And this guy really turned around Invisalign and put the science into it. So they used the data. Oh, that, sound, that is so amazing. No, he's great. He's fantastic. But So he's put, he's put the science into tooth movement. And Invisalign, Invisalign, I don't know of another, again, big brand, certainly not in dentistry, that reinvests in research and development. Uh, brackets, brackets, braces, wires, they've been the same for 20 years. The big bracket companies, 3M, GAC, American Orthodontics, the big ones, they're not, there's not, there are no new products coming out. They're not doing anything new. Invisalign has put, I know the number's over 500 million. They put five or 800 million dollars, which could have just been revenue and as a Wall Street company, they love revenue. They could have, you know, they could have had way more revenue over the last 20 years, but they put that back into research, and now it's it's paying off. It's Invisalign. So, so yeah. in all this um, investment in Invisalign, um, do you think it's 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 making the case go faster? Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Do you think that's a when, big part of your 24 to 18 months? Just that the Invisalign tray is more precise and is moving teeth faster. Yes. Because, sure. you, some of because I always, um, especially um, with adults, I mean, when you tell a kid it's going to be two years, you know, I mean, they're a teenager, but yeah. when, when a, lot, a lot of adults don't want to be in braces two years. No, I don't know anyone who would, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, for sure. Um, in my practice, I, I have very few adults in braces. There's, there, there's, still a, there's still a couple things that braces do better than Invisalign. There's some things Invisalign does better than braces, but... For sure, ninety-five percent of the adults in my practice are in Invisalign. So a lot of lot of moms tell me they go um, they say um, that you want to put their child in Invisalign, and they think, well, their daughter gets up and she spends thirty minutes getting ready, and she's all cares. The boy's wearing the same shirt three days in a row, and you can't get him to wash his hands. Is he going to wear his trays? So the question is, are girls more compliant because they're more beauty driven than? <laughs> little Johnny who you can't even get to brush his teeth? Um, I don't know. I don't know if I could say that or not. Maybe, maybe, maybe as, a, as, a, as a broad generality, uh, the, girls, the girls work a little harder at, at aligners and, than the boys do. Um, but I'm having, I'm having great success with, with my Invisalign teen or preteen patients. Uh, my youngest Invisalign patient's been 10. Um, and a 10-year-old will wear the tray? Yeah. So when you said a liner, that's a that's the doctor term, and Invisalign is the brand term. Yeah, because um, yes, Invisalign's a brand. It's like Coke or Pepsi. Um, 
there are competing brands. There's other companies, one is called Clear Correct. Uh, anyway, there's a couple other products out there. Um, so the, the general term is clear aligner treatment. Um, the little plastic trays are called aligners. Um, in the general term is called clear al clear aligner treatment. Aligner treatment. Yeah. So that's like saying braces. Yeah. Yeah. Just a general braces. Yeah. So the the biggest nightmare in orthodontics when I was a kid is if you uh, were the unlucky one that had to wear headgear, and some of them. I mean, I went to. Uh, St. Patrick's Grammar School, and I, I, I felt sorry for a couple of girls because, I mean, they had to wear a contraption oh, yeah. around their head. Um, how um, Has the incidence of headgear <laughs> gone down? I I have never placed a headgear in my 20 years. I So it's dead. I learned how to use it in school, um, but... Sorry, this watch keeps talking to me. <laughs> um, I learned how to use it in school because that was still back in the 90s and they taught me how to use it, but I've never put one in. I do know that, that there's still some, some orthodontists out there that, that are still, still using them, um, but I can't see it. I, I think once that, once that generation of orthodontists is, is retired, I don't, think they'll, I, don't think any, I don't think any new orthodontists are relying on headgear as a So you could device. manage all your cases for 20 years without that modality of treatment. Yeah, headgear is just, headgear is, the, every, the layman's term is overbite, orthodontists call it overjet. Um, there's a hundred ways to correct overjet and if you can find a way to do it without having a kid strap a piece of metal on their face, then uh, I think that's a better way to do it. Just remember the overjet. Jets fly <laughs> over the horizon. So yeah. you overbite, yeah. overjet. Uh -huh. well, what's, uh, what's your most um, fun overjet cartoon character? Fun overjet cartoon character? Well, what's the most famous cartoon character with overjet? I mean, wasn't, it wasn't Beavis and Butthead? Didn't one of them have... <laughs> A severe overjudge. I don't know. I never. Uh, grew, I never grew up. Was that MTV? Yeah. Yeah. I, I was in Canada at the time. Never had the MTV. So you don't. You don't uh, know any any car. What, no. what about on the Simpsons? They got a lot of weird characters. Or uh, uh, um, South Park. None, none of those guys have any uh, clear overjet cases. You'd have to tell me. I don't, <laughs> I don't have. You're, don't you're have, not have, watching enough Simpsons no, and MTV in your no. lifetime. <laughs> um, you know the thing I love about Invisalign the most is um, back to that girl boy thing. Yeah. Um, some boy had braces for two years and he wasn't properly brushing. A lot of times you took off the braces. That's terrible. And there were, de t explain about that. There was demineralization around yeah. all the brackets. So, well, so braces don't cause cavities, but braces make it a whole lot harder to keep your teeth clean. Everything you eat gets stuck on there. It's not going to wash off unless you get at it. And uh, for the most part, people do pretty well of getting in there and brushing their teeth, but the braces, the braces, hold the brush from getting at the gums. And so unless you really intently brush along your gum line, you're missing it, and lots of people do. And so that leaves the plaque around the brackets, and it's no different than getting a cavity in between your tooth. Uh, the first step of, of a cavity is what's called demineralization or decalcification, where the plaque, the bacteria, are leaching the calcium out of the tooth, and it turns it kind of a opaque chalky white and it's permanent it doesn't go away it's there forever um, it's irreversible and if it progresses it, it turns into a good old-fashioned cavity in your tooth and so the when we take off the braces sometime if those kids haven't worked hard at it there's a little there, there's a square outline of where the bracket was because the bracket's protecting the tooth and it's usually up by the gums it's a, a square halo of of white opaque decalcification and I've seen little bits of it and I've seen rampant where every single tooth has it and it's it's really it's 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 the it's the most frustrating part of orthodontics for me and my team because we we just try to educate the kids and the parents every time they come in um, you know, but it's hard. What do you, what, what's a parent going to do? Go and brush but, the kids' teeth three I, times a day? I don't know if I'm biased because I have four boys, <laughs> but, uh, but you, you, do you see more of that in boys than girls or not really? Uh, no. Really? No, not necessarily. Even 50-50? Yeah. Huh. I wonder why I have a bias the other way. <laughs> I, don't huh. I, I don't know. But, but, um, but, but, and then the other question, um, 
you know, it makes sense. If we had to cut this table in half, would you use a hand saw or a power saw? Uh, if power saw was sitting there, power saw. So then would you use a manual toothbrush or an electric toothbrush? Uh, I just, I tell my patients uh, the gadget is less important than frequency and how it's used. So, you you know, I had braces forever. I had braces 13 years because I was born with a cleft palate. That's just what it took. And I had 13 years of braces, and I don't have any decalcification. And that was in the 1980s, and all I had was the old school toothbrush. So, any any product will work. It's just you got to use it, and you got to do it in the frequency and, and how you use it. Um, do you, do you water picks are great. Were, yeah. Water picks are actually great. Sorry, it's just to keep going on that subject. Yeah. Like a water pick is like putting your head in a car wash every time you use it. So it really will blast around those blast around those brackets right up into the gums. So if anything, if I see a patient that's struggling, we tell them go to go to Target and pick up a water pick, old school water pick. Um does water pick have the mobile one now that you can take in the shower? I think so. Because um, a lot of people complain about the water pick. You know, they buy it for their kid, oh, and yeah. the mirrors oh, in the every, house, it's and awful. everywhere. <laughs> um, that's why I always like the shower floss. Yeah. Because you just unscrew your shower head, you put the device on there, and put your shower head back on, and then there's a two foot cord hanging. Oh, hilarious. And uh, so you, if you're using know. the shower, it doesn't matter if you're spraying out, you know, uh, and making a mess in the shower. Yeah. But, um, but I saw, Ryan, what was the brand that had the water? water flosser, water pick that you filled up and then you took it into the shower. Do you remember Do you remember that? Uh, I, I think it was online or it's on a catalog. I'll, I'll, I'll try to send the information because um, the patients that I've had that got it just water said... Pick? No, I, water pick's a brand. I don't think they have a portable one, but there's a new portable one Yeah. at Target know. and Walmart and all that places. But I, I think if you get the one that you can carry into the <laughs> shower, the shower. Um, you know... I mean, some people are clean freaks, and yeah. they just can't stand to have that the mess made in the yeah. bathroom. But that's uh, this, you know, that just I haven't even. That's part of why I I really think Invisalign is the future. It's Invisalign. You take it out, brush and floss like normal. There's no there's no diet restrictions. It doesn't affect your lifestyle. You eat what you want, and you keep your teeth cleaner. There, I have never seen a documented case of decalcification with Invisalign. Never so, so do you think you personally being in braces thirteen years is what made you obviously be an orthodontist? Oh yeah, hundred percent. It was that's uh, cool. Yeah, it was. Uh, my orthodontist is still practicing up in Calgary, Alberta. Doctor Duncan Brown. He's in his seventies for sure, but um, he he. Doctor Duncan Brown in where? Calgary, Alberta, up in Calgary. Wow, um, Doctor Duncan Brown. Duncan Brown. Did he invent Dunkin' Donuts? He didn't. He probably should have. No, <laughs> he wouldn't have made it because in Canada it's all about Tim Hortons donuts. So, is that right? Have you heard of Tim Hortons donuts? No, I haven't. Literally, if there is a Tim Hortons donut on a corner and a Starbucks across the street in Canada, Starbucks will be dying. Everyone's going to Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons. Tim Do Hortons. they have one at Tuki? No, it's the only uh, Tim Hortons. Um, did they either got bought out or they teamed up? I think with like Wendy's or something. Uh, there's one at the hockey rink. That's the only one I know in town because so many of the Canadian expats here go to the Coyotes hockey games. But so as a Tim Hortons, on as you can't support hockey because they knock out more teeth than any sport on the planet. Well, whenever they pan at the come pro, on at the pro whenever, level, yeah. Whenever they Not pan the, the bench, my kid's a our, hockey player. Whenever they pan the bench, those yeah. boys are all missing their front two. True or false? Oh, absolutely. No, it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, it comes at you. They, the kids, they make the kids. My son, my twelve year old Ben, he's he's a hockey kid. Loves his hockey, but he's got a full he's got a full face guard. I don't know how old. old I think when they're like, I don't think I don't think actually they can take their face guard off until they're eighteen. Anyway. But yeah. So did those pros, uh, or are they just older than when face masks were necessary, or did they just reach a level in quit wearing the mask? I mean, because because really, I mean, what what percent yeah. of the Phoenix Coyotes is missing anterior teeth? Oh gosh, I wouldn't even know. Um, I mean, I, was, I maybe it's because I'm a dentist watching the deal, but yeah. whenever they're trying, I'm just like, oh my god! And, oh, then, yeah. and then after the show, they have the uh, press conference. They all their their nice, pretty teeth in, and you're like. Go, go back, uh, go back, roll the film back. None of these guys right. have teeth. Oh, no. It's, so you uh, think they lost them at the pro level or just when they were kids not like as, your kids? Not better? as kids, no, because they you mandatorily have a full cage on until either 16 or 18. But, but going back to when yeah. the pros were kids? 
the pros playing today? Yeah, it? probably. So how long did you cry when the uh, moving the stadium to Tempe fell through? <laughs> yeah, and, I was really excited about that. Oh I, uh, my god, I was so excited. I I was I was. If that deal was signed, I was going out the next day and buying season tickets like now, even though it was going to take three years to build, because yeah. I, I wanted to be a season ticket holder to be ready to, to already have my, my prime seats for when it moved over. Um, I love hockey. I'm Canadian. My kid loves hockey. I didn't go to a single game last year. It, just, it doesn't make sense. I can't drive out there on a Tuesday night through rush hour traffic. It's literally through rush hour traffic. It's an hour and ten minutes to drive out there, and then the games from seven till ten, and you're getting your kid home. I'm getting my kid home at, at eleven or something on a Tuesday night. You know, it, it, you can't do it. So um, that really, that really was too bad. Sometimes I think that whole Tempe deal was just a uh, a negotiation tactic <clears throat> to redo their deal in Glendale. Do you um, think so or not? No, no. I know I've got I've got a, a, a friend in commercial real estate. Um, and the the group that that has that project moving for us, like they're called Cantalis or something like that. They it's it's you know it's always the money. It's you know it's it's a half billion dollar project. It's like a three hundred or a five hundred million dollar project, and they they were pretty serious about anchoring it with a multi use entertainment facility. You know, right next to the light rail, um, but so. Now, I I don't think I don't think it's it's not. We'll see if it ever, if it gets announced, but I'm pretty sure that's actually going to be where Amazon goes. In Tempe, I you heard it here first. Gosh, I, that would I, be cool because they're looking I, for a city. Right Amazon now. is is looking for another kind of corporate campus. Um, <clears throat> they want wow. They want young progressive communities. Um, the one thing, the one thing Phoenix is lacking is um, public transportation. The, we have the worst public transportation that I've ever seen in the world. Um, but I think, I think that chunk of land next to ASU, literally the largest university in the United States, very progressive university. Uh, my guess is that we're gonna we're gonna hear Amazon's dropping down there. Wow, that would be so nice. We'll see. We no. we call this. Um Awatuki uncensored. So let's go right to the most controversial stuff that, that I'm hearing in Awatuki. Um, I would say um, it seems like about 25% of Awatuki thinks fluoride is toxic, whether it's in the water or in the toothpaste. Um, um, what, what do you say, you know, we're talking about preventing yep. decay. What, what do you say to your patients when they say, well, the Phoenix, I buy bottled water because my water out of the faucet they added fluoride to it and i will not buy a fluoridated toothpaste yeah you know it's uh i i, I mean do you hear that or do you no I was, I was just gonna say i think that maybe is the difference between the dental office and the orthodontic office is they're they're you know because that's in that's in your real host they're they're there to get their teeth cleaned and checked and healthy and so that conversation's happening there with you and your hygienists i haven't heard a patient mention the word fluoride Forever, I don't know, 10, 20 years. It just, uh, that conversation doesn't come up in my office. Um, what do I personally think of it? I, I, I think it's, it's uh, in terms of public health, I think the benefits outweigh the risks. Um, you know, the 20 years that I'm practicing now, kids, kids don't, don't have cavities. They just, they just don't. Boy, they did here thirty years in, ago in before their, there yeah, was fluoride in, in, in the water. In their baby teeth, they do sometimes, but uh, but you know, like, uh, it's it it works. It's effective. It has its it has its uh, it has its negatives, but it's uh, overall. It's I think I think our our kids' teeth are healthier than our generation. Um, I practice in all to you two years before there was water fluoridation. Really? Yeah. And I would say three years after the fluoride was in, the two and three year olds walking in, sure. I mean, the decay fell off a cliff. No, it's, it does. Like, and the people that are telling health. me how toxic it is, I'm like, did you treat kids <clears throat> right. in 87, 88? Well, you know, I don't, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not up on all, all their concerns with the toxicity. It's, you know, it's, it replaces calcium 
they're both similar two plus ions um, and I I'd, I'd have to I'd have to read up on what the toxicity problems are I you know I, I don't know I'm not educated on it it's uh, it but all I see are benefits so yeah I would if it ever came up on a, on a ballot again I, I, I'd be a vote I'd be a four so they're probably now wondering what toothpaste do you use uh, whatever is cheap and on sale. Again, I'm uh, I am I'm less product driven and more just how often do you do it and <laughs> make it work. Um, I think I think the big dental brands, as you mentioned, the Crests and the Colgates, you know, the multi billion dollar companies, they're great at marketing. Um, you know, he I, remind me of you. Probably don't know who this guy is, Jack Lalane. I know the name. Who is that? He was the first exercising king on TV. I mean, okay. You ripped, you're fed, all that. <laughs> but he was so funny because, you know, they'd, they'd ask him, and say, what Stairmaster do you recommend? Uh-huh. Because I recommend a $1 concrete block set on the floor and just step up all right. and step back. Yeah, or the, it's $1. It yep. won't break. There's no moving parts. Go to the high school and run the, run the stairs. Yeah, right. and what I loved about Jack Lane is um, when we were growing up and he had his exercise show, the only thing you had to have in front of your TV was a chair. And he almost never used that. And he's like, he's like, you don't need all this stuff to sure. exercise. And, yep. and then you look at some of the most uh, physically fit people in the world, and they were in prison for 10 years in a cage, <laughs> and they were just doing push-ups right. and sit-ups and air squats and yeah, just moving. Yeah. Um, nope, so toothpaste, whatever's I'm gonna ask you cheap, another very in. controversial thing. Okay. And, um, I didn't know fluoride was a big controversy in Albuquerque. I really well, didn't. <laughs> I just want to say, yeah. can I just weigh in on fluoride just for one second? Yep. Um, um, my deal is that um, a lot of people say that um, you know fluoridating the water is putting medication in there. It, it, it's an it's an atom. It's an ion. It's not a medication. No one made it. You know how fluoride is actually made. The whole universe is pretty much hydrogen, right? And then a big cloud of hydrogen gas gets so dense, the gravity forces two hydrogen into helium. That's your sun. And then when all the hydrogen is turned into helium, the star collapses, explodes in a supernova, and that's what makes all the bigger elements, carbon, fluoride, and silver, gold, all that stuff. And, and then it, it showers through the universe, and it shows up naturally in the ocean at 1.4 part per million. It's the 13th most common element of the planet. And so that planet covers 70% of the planet's ocean at 1.4. When they put it in the water half that amount, 0.7 of a natural element made in a supernova decay plummets. So when you say it's a medication, it's not. When you say it's not natural, they put in half the amount it's found in the ocean. The ocean has 70% of all the species on Earth because it covers 70% of the surface. So I, I just don't know where it all comes from. But it, here's the, the other big controversial thing from 30 years ago and I start now. Okay. Um, when these babies are having problems nursing, uh, they have franiums, and some of them are going in and getting them the laser removed. And I know in orthodontics, um, a lot of people have a gap between their teeth because of a franium. Sure. Um, will you, you explain that? Do you think that franium should be removed when they have baby teeth, or is it cosmetic? Because some of the most famous movie stars have space. Who, who's that guy that? on that morning talk show that replaced uh, Kathy and Kathy and uh, Regis. They got that new uh, don't, NFL player. Don't watch it. Don't yeah, watch it. But, it, but, it, but so a lot of but, people... Yeah. Freedom? No, don't have it removed in a, in a baby. Um, I, I, I defer to periodontists, gum specialists. Um, so, you know, if, anyone, if anyone's listening, don't know about it. The big tissue tag between your front teeth, sometimes it can be very heavy and fibrous and it separates the front teeth. Um, but what it used to be pretty common to go in and back in the day, excise them up with a scalpel. Nowadays, more often laser. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother doing it in a young kid because a lot of times you've got a space there when you're young, but when the adult canines come in, which isn't until like 12 years old, a lot of times they're gonna push it together. So sometimes it it resolves spontaneously but if you do have a big one and it's a big heavy fibrous one and it and it should get cut out have told us as orthodontists now they want us to close the space first and then they want to go in and do it um, because what they found was that 
if they did it first, they were removing tissue, but kind of guessing, guessing how much to remove. And if they took out too much, we bring the teeth together, there's still a big old defect in the gums up there. Um, so most of periodontists now say, close it. If you got a big space, close it, do the orthodontics first, and then reevaluate whether you need the phrenectomy or not. Which is a perfect segue into my next question. Okay. You're looking at your baby, they got their teeth aren't straight and pretty. Um, what age do you want to see them first? What age do most people start treatment? Sure, two separate questions. Uh, best time to see somebody between seven and eight years old when the top two front teeth come in. Um, that's, the, that's a great time to see them. Um, it's how many, how many kids at that age are gonna get treatment? In my office, very little. I, I am a, uh, I'm a, I'm a let's do this once kind of guy. If you see any kids that are in third, fourth, or fifth grade with orthodontics, they're in two-phase orthodontic treatment. So there's going to be round one, but then there's going to be round two when they have all their teeth. Um, again, that's a product of what I what I went through as a kid. Like my my 13 years of braces, I'm I practice to try to minimize treatment time. So great time to see a kid seven or eight years old when the top two front teeth are in. It, we take one of those panoramic x-rays and it gives us a look at, all, at everything and it gives us a, a window into are there any concerns now or is this not a big deal it's uh, you know it's pretty common that we find stuff that 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 otherwise you wouldn't know about there's impacted teeth there's missing teeth whatever every once in a while I do find that I do find pathology and that that can be you know really really lucky that we catch that. Um, so we had a, a tiny little little six year old and and we took a panoramic X ray and and her molar had um, had developed a what's called an odontogenic tumor and it had it had taken out half of her lower jaw bone, but she never had any signs or symptoms or problems or nothing didn't look didn't do anything it was just in there and it was going and we saw it on the x-ray so we referred to an oral surgeon and, and she's she's <clears throat> fine everything's fine she's, she's gonna have some tooth problems we're gonna deal with some tooth problems later on but um so great age to see them seven or eight in my office very few kids that age get treatment i i'll treat somebody that age if if something's happening that's causing damage right now or if we don't do something now, it's going to have a pretty bad consequence later. And that's usually underbites. Those ones are, those ones are tough. You've got to get on an underbite early. Or some crossbites where their you know, jaw goes sideways. So other than that, if it's just crowding and an overbite, wait. Let the teeth grow. Fix it when all the teeth are in. Then you just do you know it. who I think had the hardest orthodontic case of all time? Who's the most famous man in the world? Who? Who would you guess? Oh, the... Famous man like Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Yeah, they still never did it very good. <laughs> My God. So what? What? That was a crossbite, right? Uh, he was missing a tooth on his top left hand side, so his upper midline. All the teeth went over here. So I can't remember when in his career, but I remember seeing him in braces. What they did was pull a tooth here, pull a tooth here, pull a tooth here, to try to get it back on center, but. Uh, I'm sorry we just ruined all your Tom Cruise movie because yeah. if you're not a dentist, I don't know if you've ever noticed it, but if you just listen to what we said, if you if you just Google Tom Cruise and look at his teeth, you Google him. It, you'll, it's hard, you'll I, never I, see a picture of him face on. He wants all his pictures off to the side because face on, you see it. <laughs> have you seen his latest movie? No, I heard it's good though. Yeah, what's his latest one? Um, American um, the Mummy. No, American, oh, American Made. Made yeah. Yeah. yeah, American Made. American made. American made. Yeah, yeah um, cool. but uh, man, he's such a great actor. But it's so hard for me to always watch those movies because I'm always trying to stare at his teeth. Um, well, let, let's go. Um, let's go back to that two phase treatment because there's really two things you're treating. You're 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 straightening your teeth, but the teeth are in jaws. So it's one thing to straighten the teeth, but then you are trying to. Um, uh, another famous person, Jay Leno. Um, you know his yep. lower Big jaw is m much bigger than his upper jaw. So how do you, um, how do you, what's mom supposed to think if she says, well, I don't know about his teeth, but I don't think his face is right or the, the jaws don't seem. Maybe 
uh, the jaw is too far back. Maybe it's too far further. What what are your sure. what are your thoughts on all that? Well, orthodontics we can't we can't grow jaws. Uh, we can't stop jaws from growing. Um, we can influence growth. We can try to modify growth. You need you need a, a force system between the jaws, and so that you got to put braces on. You got to wear some rubber bands. You got to create a force system between the two sets of jaws. Um, but at the end of the day, like people have their genetic pattern and that's how their jaws are going to grow. And we, we can, we can modify it and we can try to contain the bite part of it, but we are not, we're not going to, somebody who's really, really small in the jaw, we're not going to, we're not going to magically grow them a jaw. Um, we can try to, we try to influence as best we can, but, uh, if you really want to change a skeletal structure that's still surgical uh, genetics are huge i just found out yesterday that my dad was short fat and bald <laughs> so it's huge so so what percent of your cases go to surgery i've had two surgical cases in the last five years so but, it's rare yeah and, and when you're looking at a surgeon rare it, in my hands because that's that's how i choose to offer patients treatment options um, and so what I mean by that is, is if you've got an underbite like that and you're an, you're an adult and you're done growing, there's two ways to fix it. One, surgery, where you straighten the teeth with braces or Invisalign, do jaw surgery, bring the jaws together. Or two, the non-surgical alternative is take out two teeth on the bottom so you can camouflage the jaw, the underbite. You camouflage it by bringing the bottom teeth back. So again, you've... If, if somebody facially wants to change, if they don't like their profile, they don't like their aesthetics, only surgery is going to change that. If they're happy with their aesthetics and their profile, but they have a, a bad damaging underbite, there's usually non-surgical ways to fix that. It often involves extractions to compensate for the big skeletal discrepancy. Um, and so when I just talk about the options, I just find in, in my practice where I'm at, most patients choose the non-surgical. Surgery, surgery is just it's surgery, surgery. It's expensive. It's rarely covered by insurance. They basically consider it cosmetic surgery, um, and it's you know when you have jaw surgery, you you're not wired shut anymore, but you're you're rubber banded shut for a solid two to three weeks, and you're you know you've got surgical. You're you know you're 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 black and blue, and you're you know so you're, if you're a working adult, you're gonna you're gonna take a couple weeks off work or three weeks off work. So it's hard. It's hard to manage that in their lifestyle when, when i tell you this next uh, thing I, you you might not believe me but i'll i'll actually put it up for you there's a man in new york in a i think he was in new york city or beverly hills you know what he's doing he's a dentist he comes in he puts <coughs> braces on your teeth and then wires them shut for <laughs> diet it's extreme weight loss great have you heard about this no and he's he's doing cases every day people are yeah. going in Putting on braces for no the doubt. sole purpose that they Wiring can only their drink shot. through a straw. Because, you know, they're doing, and, and I, I talked to him. So Ryan and I called him up, and um, it was amazing because he said, well, look what they're doing, Howard. He says they're doing bariatric bypass surgery. Yeah. They're doing very invasive surgeries. And he says, people are, um, the other orthodontists <laughs> are saying I'm crazy, but I can take my braces off. I can't undo a bariatric surgery. Sure. Surgery. I guess it's less invasive. So. And he said, that's what he's saying. He says, it depends on what you're comparing it to. You yeah. know, the orthodontist across the street might think I'm crazy, but compare me to the guy doing the bariatric surgery, I'm not crazy. And he's having um, huge success. I mean, people will leave it on for like 30 days and then they'll drop like, you know, 10, 20 pounds. <laughs> because they can't eat. I guess you'd have to. You, the only well, thing you do is drink. But, it, uh, yeah, well, all right. That's a strange one to me. Do, do you see? Do you see yourself bringing this service to Awatuki soon? No, probably not. I'd uh... e e email me if you want me to send you the link to his website. <laughs> Again, this is Awatuki and Center, so I hope you don't think I'm uh, throwing uh, hardballs at you. But I'm, I'm just no. telling you what I hear in the yeah. hood. A uh, lot, lot of dads say, "Come on, Howard, is 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 this braces that you want to do? Is that just cosmetic?" Or is that health? Is this sure. just is making him pretty? Yep. Or is this doctor stuff that he needs for health and nutrition? Yeah. No, that's 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 a, a, a 
standard question, and it's uh, orthodontics is a big investment. It's a big investment of, of, of time and money, and uh, and so you got to make the right choice and know what you're getting out of it. Nobody's ever died of a crooked tooth. Nobody's ever died. Of, <laughs> nobody's ever died of an underbite. You know, orthodontics is not life or death. Is it more than just looking pretty? Yes, absolutely. Um, and so the, the health and function benefits, it's, you know, you and I have, have seen the 40, 50, 60 year old people that have just slow and steadily degraded their teeth because of cross bites or over bites or just how everything's fitting together. Uh, there is no question that a set of teeth where all the high and low points all fit together right, where the front teeth come together like this instead of into the gums, there's no question that over a lifetime, that's a healthier place to be. With less crowding, without the contacts that you can clean and floss and maintain, as the, as the, as the clock ticks on, you know, I'm sure you, you, you know it too with your adult patients, as the clock ticks on for all of us, we don't fight cavities as much as we fight gum and bone loss and recession. So straight, straight teeth are healthier, better bite is healthier, um, you know, but so the, for, for a family to decide, is the, the investment worth it? It's, um, you know, that, that's, a, that's a personal decision. Uh, my kids, I, my, my kids are blessed with their mother's teeth. My kids, they don't even, they don't even hardly need orthodontics. I'm, I, I'm doing Invisalign on them. Just because I, I would feel I'd, I'd feel I did them a disservice if I didn't if I didn't treat my own kids, uh, but there's there's not a whole lot there for me to fix. But um, in the back when I did the scan, you know it even it even shows me stuff that I didn't see. And, and sure enough, their teeth don't all fit together quite right. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna make sure I get them right on on my kids. Um, but it's uh, there's more to it than looking good, for sure. You know it's the uh, the biggest change I've seen in my life. I'm 55. When I grew up in Kansas, you know, I was always in Catholic school, so Catholics always had big families. <laughs> and back in the day, you know, like I, I had five sisters and a brother. Back in the day, just the most crowded girl got braces. I mean, sure. the family couldn't put seven, eight kids in braces. Right. And they certainly weren't going to put Billy and Bob in braces. It was always the most, only the most crowded girl in each family. But today, you know, 55 years later, um, with um, birth control and only having two kids per family. Now, now the, all the kids are... It seems like a family wants braces, all, all the kids get them because they, they only have two. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's definitely... It seems to be a, a birthright in North America now. It's like it, basically most, most people expect to get braces in you know, upper middle class neighborhoods anyway. It's, it's definitely still an economic thing. It's expensive. It's, uh, I want you to touch on something else that's... Um, yeah, I hear a lot. Um, when you, you said when the teeth weren't um, straight, you know, they, they'd be breaking down, grinding, yep. you know. A lot of people wonder, um, you know, they have migraines a lot. They're grinding their teeth a lot, and they get these migraines. had a TMJ, some call it TMD. Um, do you ever see where straightening up the braces reduces the clenching, grinding, and migraines and TMD? Yes, kind of like anecdotally. That's been a... That's been, you know, a big, in my 20 years in orthodontics, that, that's been a, a, big, a big part of, of what our community's kind of gone through changes with. Um, you know, back in, back in the day before I was an orthodontist, it, in, the, in the 60s and 70s, it was, okay, you've got a crossbite, you've got an overbite, you've got jaw problems, we need to do orthodontics or else you're going to have TMJ when you grow up, TMD problems. Then it went the other way in the 80s. Oh, you had orthodontics, and now you've got a sore jaw. You're orthodontist. He ruined your jaw. Go sue your orthodontist. And <laughs> that wasn't in Canada. I was, that was in America. That was in the U.S. <laughs> yep. Good old U.S. Um, nowadays, I, nowadays, the contemporary thought in, in our orthodontic field is that the bite has a whole lot less to do with jaw symptoms than we thought it did. Is it a factor? Yep, for sure. But... TMJ is very frustrating to understand. It's the most complex joint in the body. The factors that affect it more are hormonal factors. Women suffer from jaw problems five times as much as men. Stress and anxiety factors, like the clenching and the grinding. You know, so orthodontics won't change that. I, anecdotally, 
I certainly have patients that that come to me and have have those problems and they, they put that as part of their you know their health history at the start and then during treatment or after treatment they tell me that hey you know what this is better I'm, I, I'm, I'm feeling better from this and I'm, I'm glad for that but I nowadays I definitely I caution people if you're if you're coming to me and you're hoping the primary the primary reason you're gonna get orthodontics is to try to stop your TMJ symptoms that's that's not, you know, there's, I wish I could put some guarantee stamp on it and say, yep, I'm going to fix your bite and you're going to have no signs or symptoms. It's, it's, it's more, it's more, we're going to hope to help. I know we're not going to make it worse, but can't tell you that, can't tell you that, it, that it'll, it'll go What, away, what if she's listening and she says, I don't, I don't want braces, I don't need braces, whatever, but I, but I have TMJ and yep. crunching on. Do you treat those patients? No, not me. Um, I'll, you know. You, you've had you've had dentists at today's dental that are that are happier to to help those people than I am. It's just it's just a part of my practice that that I've that some orthodontists certainly do, uh, but it's a it's an area that I've decided to to not not focus on in my practice um, because I find it I just find it very frustrating because I think it is kind of again it's kind of anecdotal. You're it's not I like to I like to be able to tell people I'm going to do this for you. And this is this is how long it's going to take, and this is how much it's going to cost, and this is going to be your outcome. I like predictability, and uh, treating someone for jaw discomfort unpredictable. Can't can't tell them with certainty that I'm going to do this, and you're going to have this outcome. So, so um, do you think people should more go to your? Uh Website clearsmilesaz.com or facebook.com. I, I'm I'm too old. I, I don't want to. I don't predict. Where do you think more? It, where, where do the modern day uh, moms go to more? Your Facebook page or your website page? I think I think they would find us mostly through websites. Okay, so um, so tell them what they're gonna find at clearsmileaz.com clearsmilesaz.com clear um, well like any business webpage you'll um, you'll find out about us you'll uh, there's the there's a page on me it gives more of my bio my background uh, there's a page on my team I've got a fantastic team and uh, you'll interact with my team more than you will me so that's why I'm proud of my team I, I love my team and uh I make sure that we, we really have a, a great set of staff on board. Um, you'll uh, you'll see some of the stuff we do in the community. That's a lot of fun. Uh, we try to really really be involved in our community. My 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 world, my business is is a lot of uh, a lot of kids, and so I focus my attention on getting my name out there by 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 sponsoring mostly youth athletics and youth sports and things like that I just I find that if I'm gonna gonna put some dollars into marketing for something I'd rather instead of a print ad or something like that I'd rather give it to the kids and and let them uh, let them enjoy that but um, and they're they're driving to work right now um, what's amazing on these podcasts is podcasts are killing radio so if you live in the foothills and you work downtown Phoenix you have an yep. hour commute um, we haven't even launched the Tukey Town website yet, but as we're doing these, we're putting them up on uh, um, Facebook, um, Instagram, iTunes, and but if you go to iTunes and you search out with Tukey, it's pretty much this show. So I, yep. I can't believe that these shows were already put out, have, have already had hundreds of views, but, but the point is they're driving. So give them a visual to how to find your office from, from some known, like everybody knows. Start with some place that everybody knows, then visually right. tell them how to get to your office. Well, uh, uh, Ray Road is, is probably Main Street of Ahwatukee, so um, uh, the corner of Ray and 44th Street is uh, a CVS Pharmacy and a Circle K, and we are in an office park right behind the CVS Pharmacy and the Circle K. Um, so that's kind of Ray Road's Main Street, Ahwatukee, so we're right there on Main Street, and uh, we're tucked in behind the, the CVS and, and Circle K a little bit, but... Uh, there's there's signage and it's it's easy enough to find us. So do you eat lunch at CVS or Circle K every day? <laughs> no, I go home. Uh, the, the the beauty of of, uh, of having uh, one office here in Ahwatukee, one mile from my house, is uh, that's all part of my life plan. 
So do you walk, ride bike, drive a car? How do you get home? I really thought I would ride my bike more, but I found that I always had errands to do at lunch or I, I you know, I have my kids again, I've, I've, I'm busy with my kids and so at, at five o'clock when I'm done patients, nine times out of ten I am out the door and I'm rushing to coach my son's baseball team or help with the hockey team or, or something like that, go watch my daughter on the golf team and so the, the bike ride is only, uh, it's only probably 15 minutes but I just found I've always uh, always have to drive the car because I got to get somewhere quick for the kids. And is your uh, is your busiest hour of the day the hour that uh, Mountain Point High School gets out? <laughs> uh, every orthodontic office, it's all the same. Uh, two to five afternoon hours. It's crazy town in there. What time does Mountain Point get out? Um, Mountain Point gets out at what, like three thirty? But um, we are we probably have more middle school kids and high school kids actually oh really yeah uh you know because you typically you're getting all your teeth 11 or 12 or 13 and so seventh seventh and eighth graders are the the highest number of kids getting started with orthodontics so by a senior in high school they're they're all done you uh, so you not, hope so yeah because also the other part of orthodontics to, to make it work really well to change a bite we got to have those rubber bands between the teeth and growth matters. And so 11, 12, 13, 14 years old, those adolescent growth spurts, that's the time to do orthodontics because that's, that's when we do it best. And uh, not that anybody ever is super excited about jumping in and doing orthodontics, but yeah, you'd be hard pressed to find a 16 year old girl that wants to start orthodontics. And oh, so, okay. so, you know, senior pictures are getting, you know, the drama of high school. Yeah. Seventh, eighth grade. That's the, that's the, that's the wheelhouse of getting orthodontics done. Man, times have changed because I grew up with five sisters and they were not allowed to use any form of makeup until they turned 16. <laughs> So that was a big year for them. Yep. Well, my gosh, that was the fastest hour I think I've ever done a podcast in my life. I went over. That was an hour and three minutes. Um, I just want to tell you, I just think you're an amazing man. I've been a big fan of yours for 20 years. Uh, and um, I just think it's so dang cool that on your day off, when you should be relaxing, you came over to my house to talk to uh, my homies in Awatuki about everything they need to know about Orthodox space. Oh, this is fantastic. You know, we all live in Awatuki for a reason. Um, and Awatuki is a great place to live. And uh, I think what you're doing here is, is, is fantastic. It's going gonna, it's gonna to reach a lot of people and uh, make our community a little tighter, too. So thank I you. I hope so. Thank you. Fantastic. How are you? And tell your wife I said hello. All right. All righty.